we bring to you the inspired word of God as you listen to the teachings and preachings of a servant of God, Hosanna David, preaching the end time gospel. We want to welcome you in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. I am Brother Hosanna David. You are welcome in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Welcome to the narrowest Christ for all nations. It is my prayer that God Almighty will help us even as we look at his words today together. Let us pray. Today, Lord, we give you praise and worship and glory and honor. Thank you for your goodness. Thank you for your love. As we go about your word to hear from you, we ask Holy Spirit that you will speak to us, direct our hearts. Today, Lord, we commit everything in, in our lives into your able hand, our calling, our work, all our faith, our dedication. We entrust everything into your hand. We ask so mighty God that you will help us come and reign. We want to attain. Help us, Lord. Help us, Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today we're talking about discipleship and eternal reward. Discipleship and eternal reward. We, if you look at the Bible, you will see that discipleship is very important as far as Christianity is concerned. When Jesus Christ came, he chose 12 disciples to be with him, that they might be with him and that he might teach them. So he took his time to teach the disciples, though they were not just 12 uh, that followed him, but there were specific 12 disciples he picked who are the apostles that they might be with him and these 12 people set the whole world on fire with christianity a lot of kings a lot of people have come and gone and they tried to put an end to christianity but they couldn't people died gave up their lives for the sake of the kingdom and refused to give up at the first place what is discipleship it is the condition or situation of being a disciple if you are a follower of Jesus Christ, it means you are a disciple. It means you are a follower, a disciple. It, disciple means a follower or a student of some philosophy, especially a follower of Christ. This word disciple is mainly associated with Jesus Christ. A lot of people don't use it outside Christianity. It is very common. When you say disciple, it's, it's mainly among Christians that use that word. We have been called today and we are given mantles. And this mantle is what we carry to the end. I remember a time Jesus was asked, Lord, we have been following you. What will be our reward? Are we just following you? What will you give to us? Last week I talked about our call to citizenship. If you have been called and you are serving as a disciple, what do you stand to gain? What is your reward? This is very important. People work so hard because of what they will gain. You as a believer, the question is, do you know what you will gain? A lot of people do not know and that is why they misbehave. That is why they want to look at their neighbor. They want to look at fellow believers to choose what to do for God and what not to do for God. But do we supposed to 
look at our believers. I know we should look at them and get ourselves encouraged, but are we actually to look at them and get discouraged? When you go to, a, let me say, a river and you are catching fish, and anyone you catch belongs to you. Will you say, oh, because my neighbor is catching very little ones, let me catch little. When you have a lot of things to do with money, when maybe you don't have money to pay rent, your children's school fees have not been settled, a lot of things, bills waiting on your table. Will you say, because my neighbor is catching few fishes, I don't want to catch much. No, you will do the best you can to catch as many as you can. We have a reward both in this world and in heaven. But first of all, I want to bring our minds to the kind of people that Jesus Christ actually called. I want to measure this today's message on the 12 disciples and also look at what Judas lost. Some years ago, I listened to a man who were doing, um, I think it was a week of evangelism in church where we talk about soul winning, purely soul winning. And he was saying that now he doesn't want to compare himself to other Christians. He just wants to do his best and go. And upon everything he said, that is the thing that stuck to my head. I don't want to compare my services to anybody. I just want to do the best I can and leave this world. Because whether you like it or not, we will all receive rewards. And I want to tell you that do not be a disciple just because you were called. Be a disciple because you have been called to be a disciple and continue to be a disciple and be faithful because you will have a reward. Many of us will invest. As a matter of fact, I have never seen anybody investing that does not have rewards at the back of his mind. The primary purpose of making investment is because you want to receive a reward. Are you working for Christ because you want to be paid on the last day? I know a lot of people don't want to be paid. It's not because they want to be paid. That's why they're working for Christ. They just go to church, give because a man of God said that you give. They go for evangelism because it is a group evangelism. Is that why you are practicing your Christianity? It shouldn't be. Intentionally follow because you know one day you are going to reap. Let's look at the Bible. I want us to look at the apostles. Some of us will look at ourselves and we say, Oh, I'm not good enough. I'm not good enough. Oh, how can I be a disciple of Jesus Christ? I didn't come from a rich home. Oh, I'm not sure I'm worthy. And because of that, we take the work of God. We take the work of discipleship very loosely and unserious. But let us look at the 12 disciples. And at the end of this message, Look at what they got as their reward so that we can be encouraged. Because if you look at the world today, you see a lot of people living their lives the way they want. People no longer want to be faithful. Faithfulness is dying out of the church. As a matter of fact, Jesus asked in Matthew 24 that when the Son of Man will come again, will he meet faith in this world? That statement is so heavy will he meet faith because iniquity shall abound and the love of many shall was good now when he shall come is he going to meet faith in this world we are living in the time when he will come 
is there still faith among many believers today no only a few today if you do not live yourself according to the wisdom of god you will land yourself in many problems in church when you relate with some of these church members because even people who are evil and wicked many of them are now hiding in the church and some who are not even wicked are not serious with their christian life so they have nothing they have no integrity to protect they have nothing to protect they are very loose let's look at matthew chapter 4 18 to 22 and jesus walking by the sea of galilee saw two brethren simon called peter and andrew his brother casting a net into the sea for they were fishers and he said unto them follow me and i will make you fishers of men and they straight away left their nets and followed him and going on from thence he saw other two brethren james the son of zebedee and john his brother in a ship with zebedee their father mended their nets and he called them and they immediately left the sheep and their father and followed him this is it the first four disciples that jesus christ called it was a very simple call follow me and i will make you fishers of men they followed there were 12 disciples that were called not many of them we are learning. Many of them you see were fishermen, ordinary men, ordinary men, fishermen, and they were faithful to the call. Fishermen, ordinary men, not doctors, not professors, they were called by God through Jesus and they were faithful to the assignment that Jesus Christ gave to them. I don't know your profession. I don't know what you are doing right now. I don't know how God met you, how the call of God met you. The question is, are you faithful? The fisherman did not say, Oh, we are not learned. If we are disciples, we're supposed to read. How many disciples of Jesus Christ wrote books? I mean, in the Bible, how many of them wrote? Look at Paul. Because he was learned, he wrote most of the epistles in the New Testament. But because they were fishermen, many of them were unlearned people. But they were faithful. If you have been called by God, be faithful to Him. Be very faithful to the call. There is this thing I told myself. I said, in every ramification, I am not worthy to be a preacher of this gospel. I am not. I am not worthy to be a pastor. Is it my background or is it about my educational background? I'm not worthy to be a pastor. So if God called me to follow him some years ago, I should be very careful because at the first place, I was not qualified. And I said, I say it a lot of times that now that I know that originally I was not qualified, what do I supposed to do? Do I supposed to bring shame to the name of God to make him regret? Or I, I'm supposed to bring praise to his name? I am not qualified to be a pastor. There are people who are more qualified than me. So if God picks me, why should I bring shame to him? I have no reason. To bring shame to him. What I should bring to him 
is praise. That is what I need to bring to him. When people see my light, my good works, they should give glory to my Father in heaven and not regret meeting me. Because at the first place, I was not even qualified. Are you faithful to God? Look at what these apostles did. They were faithful to the end. And I, now let me show you something about what we are going to become. Revelation. Revelation chapter 1 verses 5 and 6. And from Jesus Christ, who is a faithful witness and the first begotten of the dead, and the prince of the kings of the earth, unto him that loved us and washed us from our sins in his own blood, and had made us kings and priests unto God and his Father, to him be glory and dominion forever and ever. Amen. Look at it. He found us in our sins when we were completely dead in sins. His love found us. For when we were yet sinners, Christ died for us, the ungodly. And he washed us from our sins in his own blood. And what did he make us? He makes us priests and kings in his kingdom. That is enough. That is more than enough, more than enough, what he has made us. He has made us kings and priests in this kingdom. So when you look at yourself, don't see yourself as a wretched, miserable Christian. See yourself as a king and as a priest in this kingdom. This is one of the rewards we get from him. Even though we are servants, even though we are followers in the kingdom, he has made us kings and priests in this kingdom. So I want to encourage you in any way you have been called to serve in this kingdom. Be faithful. Be faithful. The devil will bring a lot of things your way to catch your attention. And before you know it, boom, you are off the track. Please be faithful to your calling. Today, it is very, very difficult for a man of God to make heaven. It is very difficult. Some of you don't know. Some of you think that, oh, once you are a man of God, you are flying to heaven. It is not like that. It is very difficult. A lot of influence. There are so much influence. Look at Benny He. He came out 2019. Some of you may say he's, he was insincere. But do you know his heart? You can judge him. Neither can, uh, do I have the right to judge him. As a matter of fact, when you see someone coming out to say, this is who I have been, now I repent. Pray for them. Accept them. Even though you still need to watch the fruits they bear, if at all they bear the fruits of repentance, we owe them prayers. We owe them support. He came out 2019 and he said he's no longer a part of the gimmickry of raising money and uh, asking people to sow a thousand dollars. Few weeks later, he went back and he came out again. He said the pressure on him was too much that they mounted a lot of pressure on him. That is it. Just being a pastor won't earn you heaven. There's a lot of pressure in this ministry. A lot of pressure. And I know it is extreme, but for now, I choose not to have any pastor friend. Yeah. Because they could lead you astray. 
especially because of my charity organization and the way I live my life. I am not looking at this world. I'm looking at heaven. I want to invest. I want to store my treasures in heaven. Some of them think I'm stupid. But I'm not stupid. I don't want to miss it. Where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. When people have alternatives, when people have plan B, plan C, they tend to misbehave. They tend not to be serious. Please be serious. And don't allow anybody to mount pressure on you. If you are convinced, follow your calling. Let's also look at what Peter wrote. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 9 and 10. But you are, but ye are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, an holy nation, a peculiar people, that ye should show forth the presence of him who had called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. Wishing time past were not a people, but are now the people of God, which have not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. You were not a people before, but now you have obtained mercy. You are now the people of God. The question is, are you faithful to the one that has called you? Are you faithful as a member of this holy nation as a member of this peculiar people are you faithful to your calling let me tell you the reward in heaven is great the reward is huge the reward is great if you are faithful to god you will know that there are lots of rewards in christianity some of the things people call enjoyment are not actually enjoyment if you are a good disciple if you are a good follower of jesus christ there are so many things you enjoy in this world remember this world <laughs> whether you are rich whether you are poor whether you are educated whether you are an illiterate whether you are married whether you are single whether you have money whether you don't have, whether you have power in this world, either political or whichever way, whichever category you find yourself, in this world, there is no peace. <laughs> I don't actually see any enjoyment in this world. Let me ask you a question. Those of you who are listening to me now, if you are, if, if you are a man, how many women have you slept with? Can you compare yourself with someone who had 300 wives? Not three. Three. <laughs> 300 wives and 700 concubines. Can you compare yourself with a king who was one of the richest that ever lived? This man had everything he needed. But at the end of his life, he said, Vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. He pursued pleasure, he pursued fame, he pursued everything. He was at the peak of any kind of human endeavor. And he said, Vanity upon vanity, all is vanity. If people who have gone deep into evil, maybe they were arm robbers, they were serial killers, if they come out to preach, they make a lot of impact. When former Satan is come out to preach, they make a lot of impact. Why? Because people know that these people went deep. And for them to come out to say, no, Turn back. I have gone through this path before. The end of it, the end of it is destruction. People tend to listen to them more. And that's why when people repent from their high level of crimes or satanism, 
Satan tends to fight them so much. Look at Paul. Paul said he worked harder more than the rest apostles. Yes, that's the truth. He became a weapon in the hand of Jesus Christ. He became a very useful material. But look at where, where Jesus picked him from. He was the number one persecutor of the church. He was persecuting the church. I want to tell you, whichever category you find yourself, be faithful. Be faithful. There are rewards in this kingdom. Even on earth, there are numerous rewards. Everyone in this world, there are troubles. This world is full of too many troubles. Ask Elon Musk if he has peace. Ask him if he has peace. He, just a few days ago, he reclaimed the title of the richest man in the world. Go and ask him. Go and look at his lifestyle. How many hours he rests in a day. Does he actually enjoy himself? I'm not saying it is wrong to be rich, but what I'm saying is that even the richest man in this world has his own worries. He has his own troubles. He's very concerned about security. Even as, as highly intelligent as he is, a young boy was tracking his private jet. <laughs> a young boy was tracking his private jet. And he was so conscious, he was very concerned about his security. This world is passing away. Please know that whichever way we have been called to serve, faithfulness is very, very important. Because whatsoever thing we do, we will reap. Now, let me show you what Judas Iscariot missed. He was one of the disciples. He was one of the twelve. And he sold his master. He sold his savior for money. But look at what the other disciples got. Revelation 21 verse 14. And the wall of the city had twelve foundations. And in them the names of the twelve apostles of the Lamb. This is in New Jerusalem, having 12 foundations. And on each of them, I'm talking about an eternal city where you have eternal joy. Having 12 foundations and each of the foundations has a name written on it. The name of the 12 disciples. Judas missed it. I don't want to go to heaven and be poor. A lot of people say, oh, I don't mind being a gate man. Yes, it is good to be a gate man in heaven than to be a president in hell. But I preached a message some time ago beyond entering heaven. Why don't you also behave like James and John who wanted positions? Okay, what Jesus, what if Master, what if one of us is at your right and the other one is at your left? Why don't we labor? If we have 80, 60 years, 70, sometimes even 50, 40, 15 years, 100, 120. If we have a short period of time to work and get, a, and get eternal reward, why don't we? put in all seriousness. There are homes in heaven. Next week we are going to talk purely about heaven. There are homes in heaven. There, heaven is a beautiful place. Please don't miss it. Don't allow anybody to take your crown from you. Don't allow anybody to take away your crown. Heaven is a beautiful place. It is a place of eternal reward. It is a place of eternal bliss. Don't miss it. Don't. For any reason. 
Don't allow anything make you miss it. Even if there is, even if there had been another place other than hellfire, please don't miss it. But unfortunately, there is no place in between heaven and hell. There is no place. Don't miss entering heaven. Heaven is a beautiful place. It is a place of gold. It is a place of precious stones. There is no moon there. There is no sun there. I say it every time. This world is my hell. Yes, I've assumed this world is my hell. And I'm not ready to compromise entering heaven. I'm not ready. It's not because I'm a perfect person. But I am saying it because this is my utmost desire. I want to enter. I want to enter that place. You have to seek it. Seek the kingdom of God and its righteousness. We have to seek the kingdom. Please seek. And you shall find. Seek. Heaven is a gift. It is a gift. Eternal life is a gift. We are not entering heaven because we are all perfect. No. Our perfection is in Christ. But we must seek it and pursue righteousness. We must seek it. Are you pursuing heaven? Or you are pursuing the things of this world? Let us pray. Oh Lord our God, we ask that you help us. Help us, O Lord. Help us, O Jesus. Help us, O mighty God. Help us to pursue the kingdom with all seriousness. Help us to pursue it, O Lord. In the name of Jesus, we want to enter that place of eternal bliss. Help us to enter in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord. I pray for as many who have been supporting our ministry. Lord, support them. Father, open the windows of heaven and release your blessings upon their lives. I pray for as many that are sick, as many who have one problem or the other. Lord, attend to your children. I speak life into your situation. I speak solution into your situation. In the name of Jesus, let that problem bow and go and live your life. Receive your deliverance. Receive your healing. Receive your breakthrough. Whatsoever thing you ever need in this world to live a holy life, to live a righteous life, receive it in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us all to make it so that we can receive from you a good, well done, good and faithful servant. Help us to enter those buildings, those mansions that you have built for us. You said in your word, I go and prepare a place for you. You have gone ahead of us to prepare a place. Lord, may we never be missing the day the road shall be called. In the name of Jesus. Oh Lord our God, help us. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please share this video. And also, don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Those of you who have been supporting us, please continue to support us. We need your support. Please support us. This, uh, our account details. Now we have Zell. Look at the description box. You're going to see Zell. We have PayPal. Uh, please support us. And the good Lord will bless you in Jesus' name. Thank you and God bless you. Don't forget to share this video with someone. God bless you. Bye-bye. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more information, visit our website, www.hosannadavid.com. Email us at info at hosannadavid.com. God bless you.